Here's a shot that's, that's a little bit more advanced. We're gonna learn two new things in this shot. One thing we're gonna learn is how to use the rotoscoping tool here in After Effects to rotoscope out my hand. In this shot, we don't have a string attached. We have my arm that is actually attached to him. So rather than using masks that can take a lot of time because we need to be very precise, we're gonna use the rotoscope tool here. And then we can see here where my hand is actually covering the back part of Ted. And so I'm gonna show you how we can use After Effects to hack this shot and make it look as though my hand was never there. So the first thing I'm going to do is rotoscope this out. So, and we don't actually need him to look back down. So we're gonna end this shot before he looks down, alt right bracket to end that shot there. So let's start it off here on the first frame and we have our rotoscope tool selected, our roto brush selected, double click on the shot and now let's start rotoing. We're using this green area to define that we're rotoscoping. So we want to to highlight the green, and part of my hand is going to be selected at first, but it's not a big deal. And the only part that I'm really concerned is where the hand connects and ends. So it ends there. This part isn't a huge deal because we're going to mask this in later. We're really only concerned with the part of Ted that my hand is close to. So we continue with this. We actually want to go back a few frames because we want to get the end of his tail in there as well. So I'm going to just add that in. And we can hold down Command to shrink and enlarge the size of the Roto Brush tool. And then if I hold down Alt, that's what I'm going to be using to remove part of the Roto Brush. So I'm going to hit Play, go through this a little bit. And as head, Ted's head turns back, we're actually going to remove my hand right there. That looks natural. Add in his ear here. And remember, our only concern really is the part that's close to my hand. This part isn't a big deal. So we're continuing to roto through this. We just had hit space and it ends there. So after we get, this is the only part of the shot that's rendered from what we've rotoed out so far too. So to continue this to extend past this point, because we need to roto all the way up till frame 36, we go here to the last point and we just click in the middle and then it's going to continue the render on. So now we can hit play and it's going to continue to add to our render until we get to the end of the shot there. Now after we've rendered that out, we're going to hit the freeze button and, and that's going to freeze all these frames and so the computer isn't, and so After Effects won't be doing any more computing in terms of what we're trying to roto out for the shot, which is Ted. If you have After Effects CS6 or below, then this is going to look slightly different, but very similar. So now that we've done that, we can go back into our composition and see that we have this shot of Ted that's been rotoed out. And, and so, what I normally like to do is feather it out a little bit. I'm gonna bring this out to 11 so that it kind of smooths out the edges. And you can mess with these things depending on the shot and how your roto turned out, but that looks pretty good right there. Now I can unsolo it and we have our back plate here. That looks great. And now I'm going to take this layer and duplicate it. And then I'm going to remove the roto from this layer and then add in a mask that goes around this part because my hand never crosses this area and so it's good to add this part in so that we have all of the original shadows that Ted created. And then we can mask this out by hitting M a couple of times and then bring that up so that it blends in with the backplate. And so when my hand is down there, we want the mask to be lower. So I'm gonna set a keyframe here for this part of the path then move down to where my hand is that low and then I'm going to just drag this down here. There we go. So now we've successfully rotoed out my hand. We have the issue here of where my hand was originally on top of Ted. And so in order to fix this, we're just gonna take this shot of Ted, duplicate it, and we're gonna hack our way into this by simply removing all of the attributes, the current masks that we have, and selecting a little part of his head here, selecting this part of his back here, 
and just copying that. Because it's so short of a time, we can really get away with a lot here. And so I'm just moving this around here to the left and covering it up like that. There are better ways to do this, but this is the fastest way and we can easily get away with it because of the type of shot that this is. We're going to just feather this in a little bit. There we go. And now hit this keyframe. And then as my hand moves up, we can change the, we're going to set a keyframe for the position, move that back, and then just move this up here like so. And then also move our mask around so that it's not affecting parts of the bear that we don't want it to. The hand starts right there. There we go. And we actually don't even want this higher up part of Ted to be affected. So I'm going to go to our roto take and hit command shift C, pre-compose it, move all attributes into new composition. And then I can remove this part of the Ted plate. Hit M for mask and just hit subtract. And it's going to get rid of that stuff there because we don't really need my hand that high up. And we can continue to move that there. This would have been better done ideally with the original Roto Brush tool, but we weren't sure exactly how far down it would look natural to have part of his back and cut off. So that looks, that works there. And it's not perfect, we can get better, but for this type of effect, it works pretty well. And then after this point when he's all the way up, then we can exit out of this. And that's all she wrote. Okay, let's move on to another intermediate shot. 